What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So the last of the cards were revealed today. Uh, we had a bunch of content creators revealing some cards and then CDPR did a Novigrad stream. I highly suggest you guys check it out. They have some gameplay there. Uh, or you can wait like eight hours from now or however many hours from when I post this video uh, because it's coming out tomorrow or today, depending on if you're watching this. So you might not even have to watch the video or this video. Uh, if you want to watch the video anyways, we're going to go over the 17 cards that they just revealed uh, in one new leader. And some of the cards are really good. Like, really, really good. Scary good. As in, SK might not be tier 1 anymore because Syndicate's looking pretty scary. To start things off the bat, this card. 8 provisions, 3 strength, deploy damage an enemy unit by 3, death blow, gain 3 coins. Um... Deathblow 3 is not hard to do. Deathblow 2 is pretty manageable, even if you don't have pings. Deathblow 3, I mean, my guess is without any kind of damage, you can get this off probably about 80%, 90% of the time. Uh, and, and Novigrad, or not Novigrad, Syndicate actually does have a good amount of damage um, across a bunch of different cards. So, yeah, this is really easy to pull off. Um, so it's a 9 for 8. It's comparable to Wily, which is an 8 for 9. So this is 2p better, or, or 2 strength better, or, or 1 of each, I guess. Uh, it doesn't have to hit your own units, which is nice. Wily, if they have no units and you have a 1, 2, or 3, you have to kill one of your own cards. This doesn't have to do that. That's kind of nice. Um, the only instance where Wily is better is if you're banishing, like a Flying Redanian, Detlaf, Roach against Nilfgaard. And Queen, when Queen um, creates a unit with shield, typically it's an Arbalist where Wily kind of kills it. This doesn't. Um, granted, mm, those cases outside of Nilfgaard with Roach don't happen too often. So for the most part, this is almost strictly better. The provisions, yeah, this card is fantastic. It's a 9 for 8. It's removal. It's really easy to pull off. It's like Toad in Monsters, except it's 8 instead of 9. And it's an faction that wants to remove stuff, whereas monsters, it's not necessarily their game plan, unless you're playing like a full removal debt left deck. So yeah, this card's just really good. It's like premium removal. This card's fantastic. Great card. Moving along, we have... Uh, four strength, destroy an allied unit or artifact, then gain six coins. This card's okay. Like... Okay, there's a card called Swindle for Syndicate, which is gain 4 to 6 randomly. Um, this is gain 6 100% of the time. So, killing a unit's pretty bad. If you kill a 2, it's always worse than Swindle. Well, I guess... Uh, unless the Swindle also hits a 4. No. Yeah, this, this card's just not very good. Um, if you destroy an artifact, it's fine, I guess. So, if you're playing a Portal deck... Even then, like, it's just no reason to play this card. It's just not. There's downsides. The upsides aren't worth it. Six coins is nice, but I'd rather four to six, and it's just not worth it. You'd have to be running a lot of artifacts for this to be worth it. You'd have to be running, like, Portal. Sun you don't want to do it on Summoning Circle. Thunderbolt Potion. Um, Tainted Ale. Maybe Mastercrafted Spirit. You'd have to be running a lot of artifacts. Or, as somebody mentioned, uh, the Flying Redanian, if you play that card, if you play this on it, the Flying Redanian comes out again. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, so if you can consistently get to your nine coins in round one, a Flying Redanian comes out, uh, you essentially will always have a target for this card because the Flying Redanian will keep coming back, kind of, except you need to have Horde 9. So you would have to pull out the Flying Redanian, spend six coins... And then play this. I mean, you could do it. It's possible. Do you really want to do that? I don't really want to. I'd rather just play Swindle. Uh, Syndicate has a lot of really good 4P cards. And I'd rather play most of them over this card. So, yeah. I don't think this card will see much play. There's just no reason to. The risk isn't worth it. It's not worth the reward. Um, this is a dual faction card with Nilfgaard, 4 provisions, 4 strength, deploy melee, look at the top 3 cards from your opponent's deck, and move one to the top range, do the same thing for your deck. So you can do one of these two options, look at the top 3, put a card on top. Um, interesting combos, you can use this with Tibor, uh, you can use this with Vilgefortz, both offensive and defensively. You can use this with um, 
Viper Witcher. So if you really wanted to, you could play this, put a card on the top and play Viper Witcher and banish it. Well, I mean, there's a card that does that. It's called Treyhern. Um, but maybe you want to play three Treyherns. Maybe you want to play some kind of mill deck or anti your opponent's deck. So the more the merrier, in which case, yeah, it's a little gimmicky. But if you really want to be removing cards from your opponent's deck, then I, I guess that works. Uh, this also works well with Cantarella. You put a good gold card on the top and you play Cantarella and take it. Uh, you can play this with Calvit and put a card on... Well, it's not necessarily putting a card on top. It's more you know what the top three cards are. So, like, if it's an engine that you need to pull out early, you can do so. If it's, like, a combo card or, or some high point slam card that you want towards the end of the round to play around, like, removal, uh, you can hold on to Calvit towards the end. Um, so this gives you extra information. So the value of this card is information or setup combos. Are those combos worth it? Two card combos typically aren't great, right? So if you play this card in Cantarella and you don't draw this card, Cantarella is a brick and that feels, it's not a brick, but if you play and it rolls like a 4P bronze, it's gonna feel really bad. Um, so it, it, it essentially is a brick. So two card combos like that where the payoff isn't extraordinary, eh, don't see a ton of play. I'm sure people will do it and it'll be fun and sometimes it'll be nuts. Um, but more often than not, if you just want to build a deck around consistency and just a good, solid overall deck, you probably won't be playing a card like this. Um, granted, you can play it just for the information. You could play this and then see what your opponent's three cards are. Maybe you see like a Gigni and you start playing around Gigni the rest of the game starting the next round. That's useful. Um, but what if it just shows you like three bronzes and that's useless, right? I, I guess you could say that your opponent's top decks are terrible, but then again, they can always mulligan, right? So... The information's nice, but you are still playing a 4 for 4 instead of a 5 for 4, which is average, so, nah. You can always replace your, what's it called, infiltrators with this card. So, yeah, if you don't like infiltrators or you're not a huge fan of infiltrators for whatever reason, maybe your opponents never draw them, you can play this card instead. It's strictly better. You get inf extra information. Yeah, so... Uh, I, I do think it'll see some play. Uh, some people will pull off some interesting combos. Uh, but for the most part, I don't think it's going to heavily impact Nilfgaard by any means. It's just a okay card. Moving along, we have uh, a four provision card, three strength, fee, three gain shield. Whenever your opponent plays a unit, boost self by one. Bonded, bonded once again, is when you have two of these on the board. Uh, whenever your opponent plays a card, boost self by one. So... If you get the bonded effect, it means whenever your opponent plays an artifact or a special, uh, it'll keep boosting this. Is that worth it, the bonded? Um, you'll get, on average, maybe one, two points. I guess, again, if you're queuing into a syndicate, it's quite good because uh, if they're playing crime cards. So, yeah, maybe it's worth it. You could play something like this with Portal. Portal pulls out two of these for the guaranteed bonded. Um, sure, that's not terrible. Um, the fee is pretty expensive. I don't think you're going to be spending the fee too often. Um, the lackeys that I went over yesterday, which were four for fours, and every time you're every time you played a crime, uh, pinks for one, increase the damage by one if you have uh, bonded. I think those cards are almost always better. The exception would obviously be if you're not playing a lot of crime cards, in which case this is better. But it starts at three. Three is pretty easy to remove, uh, and yeah, you could pay that shield, but it's really expensive. So, if this card was in, like, another faction, I'd say, yeah, it might see some play. If this was in, like, Northern Realm, sure, it might see some play. But it's in Syndicate, and Syndicate 4-drops are really good. So, this is competing against some really strong 4P plays, and I just... I don't think you're going to have room for this card. They're just better 4P cards, and you're just not going to play this. I don't think, at least. Moving along to the next card. 8 Provision, 6 Strength, Profit 2, Tribute 5, Spawn a Sly Seductress. Uh, summon her to the row. Uh, that spawn is this card right here that we just talked about. Um, well, right off the bat, it's an 8 for 8. So if you're just looking for an 8 Provision card to put into your deck... This fills it because it's an 8 for 8, and 8 for 8 is good. Like, most of the time, 7 for 8 is acceptable. 8 for 8 is solid. Um, so you can straight up play this card and just ignore the second half of the card. You don't care. You just 
never pay the tribute because you don't need to. It's just an eight for eight, and that's good. Like, if there was a Squirtle card that was an eight for an eight, I would play it in probably every Squirtle deck. Um, yeah, it's just a good card. You don't even need the second part. Obviously, the second part is useful if you are playing Sly Seductress. Uh, it just means it's easier to pull off the bonded, so that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I think you just throw this into your deck because it's an A for 8, and that's just good. And yeah, who cares about the second part? doesn't really matter. Good card. It'll see probably a good amount of play once people realize it's just a solid value card. Moving along... <laughs> Nine provision, six strength, intimidate. Once again, intimidate is every time you play a crime card, boost self by one. Deploy next tribute. This round is free. So you play this card, and then the next card you play is enhanced, or I guess it's cheaper. So the idea with this is you want to play this before you play a high tribute card. So in theory, you could play this into this card i guess um you get to deny that you don't have to pay for the tribute five which is kind of nice i mean you get three points uh free points sorry um it's also an engine and a six point engine at that which means your opponent's not going to kill it no, nothing does six damage not really like you could cleaver this i guess but like your opponent plays this i, I don't think you're really killing this card i mean yeah you could ping muzzle it but like there are better muzzle targets. Honestly, Intimidate feels really strong on some of these like big gold cards because you're playing these gold cards for the effect and the Intimidate is just slapped on as, oh, this is extra. This is just slightly better than you would think. Um, Yeah, the Intimidate is just good and it's going to get you like two or three points. This card is phenomenal. It's a six for nine, um, which means you need to get three points on the deploy. There are quite a few hefty tributes, uh, anywhere from one to, well, <laughs> we're about to show another card that has eight tribute. Um, so yeah, as long as you're hitting two tribute, you're breaking even because once again, the intimidate will probably go off minimum once. But if, <coughs> if you don't think the intimidate will go off, uh, then you have to hit a tribute three, which is not very hard to do at all. So this card is great. Uh, this card is probably auto-include because some of the tribute cards are very strong. Uh, and by, it's not it's not like next tribute this round is three cheaper. No, 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 no. It's just free, which is crazy because this card exists. This card's 13 provisions, four strength, deploy damage all enemy units on a row by two. Tribute eight. Yes, eight. Deal all... Okay, there's a typo, or I don't know. They need to reword this. It should say something along the lines of damage all enemy units by two instead. Two damage to ent your entire opponent's side of the board. That's a lot of damage, right? Uh, if you're playing Swarm Syndicate and you see this card, rip. Um, this is the equivalent of your opponent playing Zoltan and boofing... Boosting their entire row twice. This card's really good. Um, like, really good against that kind of deck. Um, it is a little bit expensive. It's 13 provisions. This is not cheap. Uh, that, that's oak level of provisions. Um, would you play this just for the deploy? Damage all enemy units on their row by two. Um, so another card that's like this is Lacerate. Lacerate. Does the exact same thing, just no body. Lacerate, seven provisions, just cards 13. Um, so this is Lacerate on a four-point body, but that would normally cost 11. Granted, it's two and one, so you should factor in a few one or two P. So, yeah, I mean, it's all right. If you're going to play Lacerate anyways, playing this card is not bad. Uh, especially, I, I, I think the big key here is this. This combo right here with this and this is massive. Uh, if you can consistently draw both and you play the uh, Madame first into this, it's just insane. I mean, do you... it's a yen negative, except it doesn't hit your side of the board. It's just really good. Um, typically, your opponent's going to have, I don't know, 8 to 10 units in a long round 3. Um, so this is, you're looking at like 20, 23 value. That's pretty good. That's that's really strong. Um, granted, 
This is assuming you pay for the tribute via Madame, the card we noticed prior. I don't know. I, I don't actually think this card is as good as people think. Um, if you do not pull off the combo. Assuming you pull off the combo, this card is quite good. Uh, but if you don't have them both in your hand by round three, um, it's a last rate on a stick. Tribute 8 is really expensive. Maybe you have nothing better to spend your coins on, in which case Tribute 8 is fine. Um, we'll see. It's definitely a hard counter to any kind of swarm deck. Um, I should mention Gimpy got nerfed. Uh, they did patch notes, and by patch notes, I mean there's one change. Um, Gimpy now is one fewer provisions, and he does three damage to one unit, and then one damage to all similar units. So he doesn't do three to all, it's three, and then one to all. So against, like, a Revenant Drog deck, uh, it's much worse. Against Syndicate Swarm, it's much worse. Uh, I guess it's the same against, like, AQ because all their AQs are one, the little drones. So uh, Gimpy got severely nerfed, but Syndicate has this card, and this card's going to do very well against Swarm. Um, will this card be a staple in most Syndicate lists? I don't know. Um, last Rate certainly is not a staple. Uh, this is last rate. It's an expensive last rate with the upside of doing more so if your opponent's super swarm. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. It's super meta dependent. I don't think it's going to be auto include. Uh, I, I think people will play it and they will determine whether or not it's good based on, well, how much swarm they're seeing. If it's a really heavy control meta and you're last rating like five ish units, then eh, this guy's not great. So we'll see. We'll see, um, but by no means auto include. But it is a quite a good card uh, if the meta allows for it. Moving along, we have a crime card: five provisions, damage an enemy unit by two, death blow gain five coins. Uh, so this is Syndicate Savagery, right? Primal Savagery in uh, SK is do two damage, death blow, uh, spawn a five point bear. Instead of a bear, you get coins. Is this card good? Um, yeah, it is. Just because SK has more pings, uh, we're, we're going to get into a card in a bit. But uh, Syndicate also has pings, like lots of pings. So uh, getting this off consistently is actually not going to be that hard. Once again, twos are pretty popular in the meta at the moment. Um, it's more removal, which is never bad. The only reason this card won't see play is because, I don't know, the other 5P cards are better. That's about it. Um, otherwise, this card is pretty good. Um just a good value card. It's a 7 for 5, like 90% of the time. Just a good card. Uh, also, the art's fantastic for memes. Uh, when this card was revealed, I probably had like 10 different memes of this card where you put like three different groups stomping on this. One of them was like Syndicate stomping on every other faction because Syndicate's really good. Uh, yeah. Um, lots of meme potential with this card. Uh, solid value card. It will see play. Is this a two of in every deck? Mm, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I th think because you're playing so many other crime cards, potentially, you're going to want some units, right? You don't want to have your entire deck crime base. I mean, you could if you're playing like a, like a crime only deck uh, with a few units. But my guess is you, you do want to play some units. So maybe a one of, maybe not necessarily a two of, but it definitely will see play. <sighs> this card. This card makes me sad inside because it's blatant power creep over a card that we currently have. Four provisions, three strength. Um, we have a card called Hawker Healer in Squayata, which is uh, four provisions, two strength, and it's heal an ally by four uh, or boost a unit by two. This is heal an allied unit. There's no cap, so if you have a 10 strength unit and it's damaged to one, this heals nine, which is crazy. Um... Deploy range uh, boost an ally by two, which is the same as Taco Healer. Tribute one, combine both abilities. So if you pay one, uh, you get both effects, which can be useful if you have a damaged card um, by more so than like two. Um, is this card good? Yeah, this card's good. It's a five for four with upside. Um, this card's nuts, uh, especially considering the next card we're going to go over. Uh, yeah, this card's really good. Super power creep, like insane power creep over Hawker Healer. Uh, not only is the effect on the melee better because it's infinite heal, uh, it has one more strength and it has the ability to do both if you pay one coin. Yeah, this card's insane. Uh, is it auto include? 
Probably. It's really good. It's a 5 for 4 with upside, and a 5 for 4 for 4 provision is good. Uh, especially because it has synergy with other things like uh, Insanity. Insanity, you take damage um, instead of paying coins, and this card works really well with it because you can heal it back to full, and then you could go Insanity again. Yeah, this card's really, really good. Um, the only reason you don't play this is your 4P slots are really crowded and you're not playing any Insanity cards. Otherwise, you throw this card in because it's just really good value. Um, yeah. And it synergizes with probably my favorite card in the expansion. Um, this is Freak Show. Six per... Ugh. Six provision, six strength. This card is insanely good. Uh, it has insanity. Fee one, give an enemy unit bleeding for one turn. If insanity was used, damage it by one instead. So, yeah, this is flex pings. This is like a mastercrafted spear with five pings. You play this card and you just start pinging. Um, this card works really, really well with Scorch. This card works really, really well with Regis. It's like an Ethne on a body. And it's a unit, not a leader. Um, granted, Ethne you can use in conjunction with like Scorch and Regis on the same turn, whereas this you would have to play this. You use the pings, wait a turn so your opponent has a, a way to interact with it. Typically, the only interaction they're going to do to play around Scorch or Regis is like a boost. Um, and you have other ways to pings. But yeah, this card's really, really good. Um, it's a 6 for 6, which as we mentioned is good. And the damage is flex, so if you need to kill a 2, you can just kill the 2. If you need to kill a 4, you can kill a 4. Uh, people compare this to Parasite, but it's like a billion times better than Parasite. Because, let's say you have to kill a 3, using Parasite on a 3 feels terrible. Well, this, you don't have to do that. You only have to spend 3 of the 6 points, and you get to keep the other 3. Uh, also, you can use it later. Uh, this card's just nuts. This, this card, like, if this card was in... Any other faction, I would auto-include it in every deck. If this card was a neutral, I would auto-include it in every deck. This card's really good. Um, some people might say, well, Pumpkin, well, what if you have coins? The, f the, the bleeding's going to mess everything up. No, not really, because let's say you're playing Regis. Typically, they have a tall unit that you're not going to be Regising. You just throw the bleed on that, right? So... Let's say you have three coins. You just give the tall unit three bleed, and then you... Go off on your merry way and ping all the lower units and set up your Regis. Um, or you can just go wide. You can just give like eight different units bleeding. Unless they play Spring Equinox, which the odds of that are zero unless they're playing Beast SK. Uh, you could just give every single one of their units bleed one and you just blew through all your coins, which is really good. So this is another way to blow through coins. This card is so good. And the premium on this card is phenomenal probably one of the best premiums in the game uh there's like a blinking animation it's like from the perspective uh of the user you're like fading out and you're like you're going unconscious it's just great this is definitely going to be the first card i premium uh when the expansion hits it's a great card it also works super well with the card we mentioned before um if you play freak show and you ping itself down to one uh you can use this assuming they don't kill it uh you can heal it to full so that's plus five uh and then you can boost it by two so it's plus five plus two, so it's plus seven. Um, and then you can go again. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> this card's nuts. Uh, you could play this if your opponent doesn't remove it. You can use the insanity procs down to one HP. You can play the card that I just mentioned prior. Heal it back up, boost it to eight, and then you can ping seven more times. Yeah, this card's insane. I love this card. Auto include in every syndicate deck. Why not? Like, it's just amazing. This card's so, so good. I, yeah, I love this card for so many different reasons. Uh, I'll probably play a Scorch deck with this. I'll probably play a Regis deck with this. It's just, it's just so good. Like, there's no downside to this. The art's amazing. The cost is amazing. The removal is amazing. It's just so flexible. It's like one of the best cards. I love this card. I love it. So good. Moving along, uh, we have a dual card with Nilfgaard. Eight provisions, one strength. Whenever your opponent plays a unit while Rico is in your hand, set his power equal to that unit's base power. <sighs> this card sucks. Um, yeah, if your opponent plays a spear tip, this is a 12 for eight. But when your opponent doesn't play monsters and is playing like any other faction and they're playing cards between one and like six, yeah, this card sucks. Uh, on average, it's just bad. Like, uh, uh, once again, unless the meta is super heavy on monsters, right? If everybody's playing monsters, and I guess this card's okay. Uh, 
but it looks like Syndicate's gonna be really, really good. So yeah, I mean, unless everybody's playing, I don't know what the card's called, the 10 point troll dude that pings a random unit by three or whatever. Otherwise, yeah, this card's more often than not is gonna be getting between like five and six value or four and six value. Um, not only that, you have to play it immediately. So timing can be awkward. Um, if this card somehow saved the highest, so what I mean by that is, let's say your opponent plays a three, this goes to three in hand, and then your opponent plays like a five, it goes to five. And then if your opponent plays like a two, it stays at five and just keeps the highest number. Um, then maybe it could be okay by round three. Hope your opponent's played like a seven or higher by then maybe then it would be playable but yeah i just don't see it. it it's it's pretty bad um if this card was like 6p sure i would play it right your opponent's gonna play a five at some point in the game five for six is acceptable uh every now and then it's really good if your opponent plays like an olaf it's like an eight for six cool uh but at 8p yeah, I'm just not seeing it. It's just, it's not going to see any play. Unless there's some combo that I'm not thinking of, maybe, uh, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of, I don't know. If, if maybe you could Operator, some crazy high bronze card, and then, I don't know. I, I don't even know. I, I, I'm i thinking old Operator when it goes into your opponent's hand. I have no idea how to make this card good. I think it's terrible. Oh, well. Moving along, we have seven provisions Five strength, profit two, fee two, purify unit. Well, just like one of the earlier cards, uh, this is a seven for seven on play. Is a seven for seven good? Yup. Um, this is auto include because it's a seven for seven a hundred percent of the time. And every now and then, if your opponent locks one of your units or plays fence and has a high vitality card or bleeds one of your card, you pay two fee and you remove it. Uh, this card's insane. Like, wow. Agora is like you're paying like two to three to unlock cards. This does it for two and it's not net, right? So the difference between like this and Agora is Agora, you pay the cost up front to put it in your deck. You don't pay anything for this. You just, it's a seven for seven. And if you need it, you pay for it, right? That's super important because it like if you're playing Agora and there's nothing to unlock throughout the whole game and you never use it as a lock you're just down a bunch of provisions like it's just it was a waste whereas this is never a waste it's you could choose to use it or not to use it this card is just great it's it's amazing like if this card was a neutral it would be auto included in every deck in the game because it's a seven for seven 100 percent of the time and then if you need to purify it, you have it this card's great uh, auto include in every syndicate every syndicate deck it's just great um if this card was nerfed to 8p it would still probably see a lot of play. Uh, it's still really good. Unlocking cards is good, especially because Syndicate plays a good amount of engines. So yeah, this card's just really good. I I have no idea how this card is balanced. It's, I mean, it's not, but... Uh, and, and this is something that's a little concerning, honestly. Um, the power level of most Syndicate cards is above every other faction. Um, a lot of these cards are zero risk um with potential upside they just break even without doing anything and that's <laughs> that's scary because <laughs> these cards are really good um so yeah great card auto include in every syndicate deck it breaks even on play with upside how can you not play it moving along we have the leader uh the last leader king of beggars it's a little spread out because they didn't actually uh leak it it was uh, in game that it was seen 15 provisions uh order gain two coins charge three so you can do this up to three times for a total of six coins throughout the game uh and every allied tribute costs one coin less so this is a passive that goes on throughout the game um there's a there's, there's a decent amount of tribute cards the idea is well tributes are now cheaper with this leader if you play a lot of tributes then it's worth it um is this leader good I don't know. I mean, if you're playing lots of tributes, then yeah, it probably is. And there's two tribute cards that I'm going to show you right after this. Um, so yeah, I, I do think this card or this leader will see some play. Uh, is it the best leader? I don't know. How many good tribute cards are there? There's a decent amount. Um, granted, they are on the expensive side and you can cheat them out with like Madame, which we talked about a little earlier today. So this leader might not be necessary but there are definitely some cheaper cards that can really utilize this such as this card 
Four provisions, three strength, deploy, damage an enemy unit by one. Tribute one, damage it by three instead. So, if you're playing the leader that we just showed, King of Beggars, this card, you don't have to pay tribute. So, it's a three that deals three for four. It is a panther for four provisions. Is that good? Yes, that's broken good. Like, that's insane. Um... And there's no downside, right? Panther, you can't hit Skoytel units. This can hit anything. Um, four provisions, Panther. Yeah, that's kind of insane. Um, granted, that is only the case if you play King of Beggars. So is this card broken? Yeah, it's broken in a King of Beggars list, but it's it, I, I would say it's somewhat fair in a non-King of Beggars list, right? If you're paying the tribute one, you're getting six for five. Granted, it's three damage, which, like, I don't know. We had this on a Squayatol card and got nerfed twice. Uh, this, like, officer used to do three damage, and they nerfed that down to two damage because the difference of two damage and three damage is actually very significant, um, right? Northern Realms plays a lot of engines. Most of them are threes or fours. None of them are twos, right? The difference between two and three damage is huge. Uh, this card's great. In a King of Beggars deck, I mean, this is, like, a reason to play King of Beggars, right? This is, like, on par with a 6P card, um, auto include in any King of Beggars list. Do you play this outside of King of Beggars? Honestly, Tribute 1's not that much. Like, you're probably gonna have coins left over, right? So the cap is 9, and most of the cards that spend, like, fee cards are, like, evens, right? Aside from the couple, like, fives, most of them are, like, I guess some of them are ones. So, yeah, no, honestly, I, I, I would not be surprised if this all play outside of a King of Beggars list, just because... It's removal, and removal is good. So the more the merrier, and it's not that like tribute one's not that expensive, right? So yeah, I definitely think this card will see a good chunk of play. Auto include in any kind of King of Beggars list. Will King of Beggars see play? Um, I don't know. Maybe if it's better than the other leaders, the extra two coins whenever you need, certainly useful. Um, yeah, maybe we'll have to see. the The, the real question is: Is that leader better than the other ones that we currently have? Uh, I could try to speculate, but honestly, at the end of the day, we just have to test it and get a feel for it because, yeah. Um, so, yeah, this card's very, very good in the King of Beggars list. And now we have another tribute card. Uh, this card is five provisions, seven strength, uh, deploy on turn end, destroy self. Ooh. Uh, tribute two, cancel the deployability. So, in a non King of Beggars list, you're playing this, you're paying tribute two. Hopefully, if you're not paying Tribute 2, you're playing a 0, which is, you know, not very good. Uh, so if you pay the Tribute 2, it's a 5 for 5 or a 7 for 7, however you want to determine that. Um, which is not bad. I mean, 7 for 7 is fine. This is, I, I mentioned earlier, 7 for 7 is fine. Like, you, you can play this card uh, in, in most Syndicate lists. The question is... Are there better five provision cards than this? Uh, and in some cases there are. Um, however, in a King of Beggars list, this is cheaper by one, right? The tribute's only one cost instead, and it becomes a seven for six or a, yeah, a seven for six. Sure, we'll call it that. Uh, or five for four. That doesn't really make sense. Anyway, uh, so in a King of Beggars list, you play this card because it's good. It, it, it's on average going to be quite good. I mean, tribute one for this, seven for six. Cool. Seven for six sounds pretty good to me. Uh, the downside is, I don't know, you have no coins that round. But if you're playing King of Beggars, you have coins because you can make two coins. So yeah, uh, auto include in any kind of King of Beggars list because it's just a good card. Um, it plays around tall removal like Geralt and Leo, which is quite good. Uh, if this was like an eight for six, then eh, it would play into tall removal and that would be pretty bad. So yeah, uh, it being seven strength is nice. Um, do keep in mind, if you're playing Nilfgaard and you create this, don't click it just because it has seven uh, HP because, well, if you do, it'll die. So yeah, don't do that. Just be warned, unless for whatever reason you have two coins attached to your leader, uh, which you can have. Other factions can use coins, but you just, you know, it's kind of hard to get coins uh, outside of Syndicate. But uh, yeah, I I'd say it's a fair card outside of uh, King of Beggars. Very good card in King of Beggars. So moving along, we have another dual card with Monsters. Uh, this card is four provisions, 
three strength order, destroy an allied unit, then spawn a Kikomor warrior and summon it to the same row. Uh, this is a Kikomor warrior. So the closest comparison we have is Revenant in monsters, except instead of you pinging one of your opponent's units uh, and getting the death blow of one damage, uh, this card, you eat one of your units. So the best case scenario is you're playing Arrakis Queen. You throw this on a row, you eat one of your drones, and then it makes another one, and then you eat another drone on the next turn, you make another one, uh, and you can, in theory, do this and fill your entire melee row up uh, and get 27 value out of this. Granted, that's contingent on you having a 10-round game, uh, you playing AQ, your opponent not having three damage for the entire round. Yeah, I mean, in theory, it's insane. Uh, but the reality is doing three damage isn't too hard. Um... This will get removed because it is kind of scary. Uh, it's like a six if it procs once if you're playing AQ. If you're not playing AQ, you can eat stuff like uh, Ancient Foglet. But honestly, if you're not playing AQ, you probably won't play this card. I don't know. Maybe you play this in like a heavy engine monster deck. I don't even know if that exists. But yeah, let's just sake of the argument. Let's say that that could exist with like Slizzard, Barbagazzi's or whatever. Uh, then yeah, I, I guess this card's okay. It's engine bait because if your opponent doesn't remove it, it's really good. So they have to remove it. So yeah, I, I think it might see a tiny bit of play. Uh, you can use this in Syndicate with the Flying Redanian. Uh, you can eat the Flying Redanian and then the Flying Redanian will keep respawning every turn. Uh, and these can go infinite. Well, up to nine. Is that good? There are better 4P cards to play. Probably not worth it. Uh, do note, it's not consumed, so it doesn't go to 7 if you eat the Flying Redanian. Uh, it only destroys it, so it's probably not worth it. You should probably keep this in AQ, and even then, I don't know. I mean, it, it, you probably just play it because if they don't remove it, you just win the game. Um, or at least you are in a better position to win the game. Um, also notice, it's 4P, so you can play this with Portal. That's kind of cool. Uh, because Gimpy no longer does three damage to multiple units, uh, you can play AQ turn one portal this, and yeah, that's kind of cool, because there's, like, okay, I mean, some leaders can kill both, but for the most part, most decks are not going to be able to kill two threes on the board, um, which is kind of cool. You can start going, and if they don't remove either of them, then you start going crazy with these um granted they're both going to be on the same row so it kind of it, it'll cap pretty quickly but you'll, you'll still get really good value so yeah um maybe you play this in a portal aq deck who knows uh granted you'll have to drop your uh ancient foglets and regular foglets to do so but yeah maybe it's worth it i don't know i i, I think this card will see a tiny bit of play I, I think people will definitely experiment with it uh it's kind of a neat card it's, it's super similar to Revenant. Uh, if it doesn't get removed, tons of value. If it gets removed, it's pretty lackluster. But, yeah, it's cool. Um, uh, another dual Nilfgaard card. Eight provisions, six strength. Deploy if you control an agent. Gain zeal, order range. Draw a card. Then move a card from your hand to the bottom of your deck. Now, this is very important. Cool down one. What does that mean? Well, that means you can keep doing this forever. Well, as many turns as you have for that round um yeah you can just keep going and putting a unit from your deck onto your bottom of your deck is essentially thinning right if you put a card on the bottom you're never going to see it again unless you shuffle your deck or you tutor that card out so it is effectively thinning um because you're never going to see that card again um is that good in Nilfgaard? well uh there's these cards called uh letho ox and Serret, which you really really want in your hand um yeah, that's just good. Uh, it's consi it's adding consistency to your deck in terms of like drawing gold card. You're getting rid of garbage 4P bronzes that you don't want in your hand. Yeah, that's a really strong engine. Now, the first part, deploy if you can control an agent. Um, I, I went through the agents in Nilfgaard and I got like Infiltrator and Sheeler. These are like the two most common ones. So there aren't too many agents in Nilfgaard. I mean, there's like Emissary and like Duchess and Fortmans, but those are spies, so those don't really count for you. Um, so the consistency on getting Zeal isn't actually that high. Uh, when I first looked at this, I kind of just bypassed and assumed you got Zeal, and Thinning is worth about 2 to 3p. So if you get this off once, um, you're breaking even, uh, and it's an engine that your opponent has to deal with. Uh, but getting zeal consistently is going to be 
kind of hard. I mean, I guess if you draw Shieldard, I mean, Shieldard's a good card, don't get me wrong. Like, most decks play Shieldard. So, if you draw this in the same hand with Shieldard, cool. Um, do note, this card's not great in round... Th well, I guess it's okay in round three, because it is draw a card. So, I guess you're, you're still cycling through your deck, even in round three. But ideally, you want to play this in round one or two, just to make your draws better in the future. Um, yeah, it's okay. It is Rolocked. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know how much play this will see in Nilfgaard. I, I think it might see play in Syndicate because there are a good chunk of engines that your opponents are going to have to remove. But in Nilfgaard, there aren't too many engines. When you play Nilfgaard, you're typically playing Nilfgaard. Or you're typically playing mid-range Nilfgaard, and the goal of the deck is just to remove everything your opponent plays. The engines that you run are like Arbalist, or sorry, not Arbalist, Pikemen and like Nausicaa Sergeants, right? And these are like low p engines that if they get removed you don't really care because you didn't invest very much uh and if they don't get removed it's just good value whereas this card i mean six for eight isn't the end of the world if this was like a 10 provision card it would be really bad uh, but it's six for eight it, it, it's not like if it gets parasite it's not the end of the world it's just not great um yeah it i don't know it's just I, I feel like this card's not going to see much play just because the consistency on Zeal is not there. And you don't play too many engines in Nilfgaard, which means when you do play this, if your opponent has any kind of lock or removal, which they probably will, uh, this just gets removed or locked. And then you're sad because you played a six for eight. So yeah, we'll see. Granted, the upside on this card is insane. If it doesn't get removed, it's a card every turn which is really really good all right imagine drawing all your gold cards every game that sounds pretty good so yeah I, I think people definitely will experiment with this card the upside on it is pretty insane um yeah pretty good card um i wouldn't be surprised if it sees no play but i, I definitely see people playing Nilfgaard will try it it's not super expensive people can easily fit it into their deck uh they'll give it a whirl um Maybe it's worth it. Maybe it's not. I don't know the consistency on the zeal. Uh, I would say if the zeal, if you can get the zeal to go off consistently, it's a good card. If you thin one card with this, it's a good card. You break even immediately. Um, so I guess if you can skew your deck and you run two infiltrators, Shieldard, and there's, I, I think like Vadir is a agent. Not that that's a good card. Maybe there's one other agent card that I'm missing or maybe the other dual nilf card card earlier the one that shows three cards is also an agent i'm not entirely sure but if you can consistently hit the zeal then i think it's a good card and you should play it and our last card for today uh is some kind of scorpion five provisions five strength insanity fee one damage an enemy unit by one cooldown one um so yeah this card exists it's called light longship in skellige does that card see play yeah it's auto included in every sk deck basically um this is better because there's no reach. Yeah. It's a good card. Um, it's just really good. Uh, I do want to say some people have been asking questions about this. If I have coins, do I get to choose whether or not to use the insanity and take damage on it versus paying the fee? And the answer is uh, you don't get to choose. It's just one or the other. So the idea is... Let's say you have three coins. If you play this card and you go to use the insanity, it won't use the insanity. It'll just use the fee. If you have coins to spend and it meets the condition of the fee, you will spend the coins always. Coin or the fee always goes first before the insanity if you can meet it. Now, let's for the sake of an argument, let's say that the fee was three on this and you had two coins. Uh, if you go to spend the fee and you don't have enough, let's say you have two and the fee is three, um, it's not going to split. So you're not going to use the two coins and take one damage. You can't do it the other way, like take two damage, spend one coin. No, it's very straightforward. Uh, you just take the insanity, you take the hit of three damage um, for that instance. So if you have the coins, you spend the coins. If you don't have the coins, uh, you take all the damage on the fee. Uh, no splitting, No, none, none of that. They made it very, very simple. You have the coins, you spend the coins, you don't have the coins, you take the damage on insanity. So I, I like it. it, it makes it less confusing. Um, in terms of this card, yeah, this card's really good. It's a light long ship. That sounds pretty good. Uh, it works well with any of the death blow cards that we've uh, mentioned in the past. And it just helps with removal and bounty and just 
yeah, it's a good card. It's a proactive play. It removes stuff. It's like a mini kind of engine. It's just a good card. Uh, is this card auto-include? Probably. I mean, it's auto-include in SK. Why wouldn't it be auto-include in this? SK is tier 1. This faction is probably like tier... I don't know what's higher than tier 1. Tier 0? Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a little worried. Syndicate has a lot of really, really good cards. A lot of cards that just break even on play with upside. And that's scary. So, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Now, for those of you who might be scared uh, for Syndicate... Maybe you think, oh, Syndicate will be the best faction. Everyone will play Syndicate. Every other faction will suck other than Syndicate. It'll just be Syndicate for an entire month. Um, I do want to mention Detlaf. In the past, when Detlaf uh, was introduced into the game, his play rate was insane. His win rate was insane. He was just dominating the meta. He's like 80% of the meta or something. So about a week into the, the month, uh, CDPR nerfed him pretty severely. Uh, typically CDPR doesn't do nerfs. Uh, they do it every month. They don't do it mid month. So I, I guess what I'd like to say is have faith that if syndicate is completely busted and like the play rate, right? So like if the play rate of the faction is super high, that's not necessarily a concern because it's, it's a new faction, right? Uh, the, the play rate should be high because everybody wants to try it. Um, but if the play rate is super high and the win rate is super high, like, I don't know, let's say the, the play rate's like 80% and the win rate's like, I don't know, 68% or something. That's a problem. Um, so much so that it would probably get nerfed. Like a lot of cards or a good chunk of cards would get toned down. So I, I would say don't get too scared if Syndicate or if you think Syndicate's going to be too strong. Um, my guess is CDPR will take action and, and nerf it if need be um just because it's in their best interest if syndicate's completely broken and just dominating then it's kind of not fun to play any of the other factions and when you have six factions in a game and only one of them is good that's a problem so yeah i i would just assume they will nerf syndicate if it is too strong so don't worry about that um also syndicate's kind of good for free-to-play players right because all the syndicate cards are in one keg. So if you're new to the game um, and you're willing to spend some money or you're willing to save up kegs or or uh, you just invest in syndicate because, well, if you open up a syndicate keg, you're guaranteed to get a syndicate card. So invest in syndicate uh, because, you know, all the cards are syndicate. You can't get any of these garbage cards like Northern Realms or monster cards. Just all syndicate. <laughs> Anyways... I hope you guys enjoyed the review. It's a little longer. I apologize for that. I hope you guys are excited for tomorrow as I am. Let me know what you guys think about the cards. And I'll see you guys on the next video or tomorrow because I'll be streaming tomorrow. All the new cards. Yeah. See you guys later.